Hello, everyone. GM, GM, and welcome to the Change Log. And I've got a special guest here today. I've got Mike McKenna, also from the Solana Foundation. How are you doing, Mike? I'm very well. Yourself? I'm doing well. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on the Change Log. This is your first Change Log, so it's 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 uh, it's great to have you here. Yeah, here I am in the uh, beautiful podcast lounge at uh, the Solana Foundation office. It's uh, very exciting. Yeah, very very brightly lit background. I'm very jealous. It's uh, it's also been a big week in Solana as well. It has, it has. And let's let's talk about some of the commits. What have you seen this week? Okay, so this is a great one from God Mode Galactus. Thank you very much, God Mode Galactus. Um, it's for deploying large programs. And I think as time goes on, we're going to see more people developing larger and more complex programs. Mm -hmm. It used to be, until a few days ago, um, that if your program was particularly large, uh, the block hash that you use as part of that transaction may actually expire. It may no longer be in the last 150 block hashes. Uh, so that is now fixed. So if you've been having problems deploying larger programs or you were concerned about that, um, then that is now resolved. Yeah, this uh, this fix should trickle out in the next couple of releases. Uh, unless you're building from source, then you could get this fix immediately because it's, uh, it's merged into master. There's another cool uh, PR um, that's been merged for uh, large programs as well, is, and it relates to um, the uh, cost to deploy programs. Um, it used to be that the cost to deploy programs uh, was twice the size of the program, and the idea behind that was to allow the program to be updated, uh, upgraded over time and use more space. That has now been changed to one times, uh, which reduces the cost to deploy uh, all programs on Solana, but particularly relevant for people who deploy large programs as well. Yeah, this has been a, a really interesting one. We actually gave it a shout out, this like idea of this uh, this CLI update coming out. Uh, we gave it a shout out a while back on the change log when the feature was put out to actually allow programs to be extended. And now that that's live on mainnet, uh, we need the CLI fix. So John Chinque over at Labs actually published the, the CLI fix, so it takes care of that. And it actually kind of segues into this next one that because the new accounts are uh, taking up less space, with, so you're putting in less LAMP ports into actually you know, publishing a program into the buffers, uh, someone had actually discovered that we were actually a little bit short on the default amount of LAMP ports, and the, or rather the default amount of space that uh, was being used to calculate the LAMP ports. So it was missing some metadata. This was never really noticed before because, like Mike said, you're you're when you would deploy a program, you're putting enough LAM ports for nearly twice as much space as you would need in order to be able to upgrade your program in the future. But now that the default is to use less space and or the minimum amount of space, we kind of realize that uh, we're missing a little bit of data in there. So that's also been fixed. I love that uh, we're kind of tightening things up and uh, oh, know, yeah. really focusing on uh, people, people, people uh, deploying. Um, the good, yeah, things so good. good things are happening there. Speaking of speeding up, uh, actually, we'll, we'll cut commits to Solana itself. Um, I think there's the last one that's also pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's this other commit, which is kind of uh, along the lines of commits to the Solana repo specifically. Uh, if, you've, if you've experienced submitting a PR or forking the Solana repo, all of the CICD kind of actions and everything are going to trigger. This PR actually... Uh, disables some of the cron schedules on any of the forks that would happen and forks on the Git repo, not like forks in the Solana chain as as the chain progresses. Um, but it makes it so the CI CD pipeline is a little bit faster. And so if you're uh, submitting additional PRs and working on on making changes, this actually improves your developer experience and your, your speed a little bit, which is really nice. Yeah, I think even people who aren't like committing to Solana core can appreciate Anyone who's ever worked on a, on a project with really slow CI um, can appreciate the kind of just the annoyance when you're waiting for it to fix and get a result, either a yes or no, and maybe it's a no when you need to iterate again, and then you need to go through the whole process. So anything that uh, that like speeds mm -hmm. up um, that process is more than welcome. Hundred percent. And then uh, I saw this. I chose this SIMD SIMD one zero one half rent or have rent, I suppose. And this one is super interesting. I mean, we're talking about all of these changes of deploying programs and, and rent. And uh, this proposal actually changes how much rent or how much rent is actually required for an account to be rent exempt. Um, so it's a pretty interesting proposal. You can give it a read through and give your thoughts on, on the repo. 
Yeah, the dis- the discussion in that is really really interesting. Um, so there's all kinds of I guess uh, different incentives at play there. Um, you know, it's uh, probably not worth going into now, but it is it is a good read if you're uh, into mm-hmm. kind of the economics of blockchains. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. All right, let's go into let's go into resources now. Mike, did you see any resources that caught your eye? I mean, it's kind of a shameless plug for you a little bit in this one. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, so there's a thing that was until last week it was called Node Helpers, which um, if you weren't aware of this, uh, you've probably got some boilerplate code that you've written or that you've copy pasted from someone else to do common Solana things. It might be. Um, reading private keys um, from a file or, or from your environment or writing them out. Um, it might be, what else do we have in there? Um, yeah, request and confirm airdrop. Airdrop, yeah. So they re- that, that's actually a new one. Um, so request and confirm airdrop is uh, sometimes you ask for an airdrop and you await the request for, for an airdrop. And when that await returns, that airdrop hasn't, that transaction hasn't quite finished yet. So you go and ask for some kind of, uh, well, I like to think of uh, like DevNet uh, Sol as like monopoly money. So you go and ask for some DevNet Sol and um, it hasn't actually arrived yet by the time you use it. And then if you rerun that transaction, um, the, suddenly everything is fine because the airdrop is completed now. Um, so request and confirm airdrop, requests an airdrop, waits till it's actually ready to use, and then actually returns back the current balance of your account. I thought that was a nice way to do things. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people who probably cut and pasted the same, like, 10, 12-line function there. The, there will be... Uh, we've got something in there now, but there's going to be something, uh, like, coming into Web3.js as well in the future, which is uh, exciting too. But yeah. uh, if you want a preview for how it could look, um, check out the helpers repo. Sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's this other... Did you see this really cool Lucid project from Thorsten? This, I did. Uh, Solana test validator on steroids, as he calls it. Did I you lo- see this thing? This is super cool. I love this. this is, and this is my favorite thing from the whole last week. Um, oh, absolutely. It is... Uh, I'm a big... like I love local net. Um, some people are like, if they, they like to develop on DevNet... Um, I the, just the idea of running a local validator um, is it feels really natural to me as somebody who kind of came from a Web two background. You're always like programming against like local host, etc. Um, and yeah, you occasionally have to like download some program that may not necessarily be in the default like uh, local host programs, but that's easy to do. Um, and yeah, I just love running my own validator. This is super super cool, and the thing I am excited about in particular are these snapshots. Yeah, they're super cool. So a quick high level, like you can, we'll have the link in the description for checking out this video and and finding Thorsten as well. And like the idea of the snapshots is he's effectively with this like custom wrapper for the test validator, he's able to do it to adjust the actual ledger itself because he, you have access to the file. So you can, he's actually adjusting the state within the file, the ledger file, which is really, really cool. So you can kind of do rollbacks and, and roll forwards of different state changes within your test validator. So it's really cool. Give it a give it a check out. But the reason I'm excited about this is I can imagine some really kind of complex, hard to debug issue, and being able to have like snapshots like this and roll back something to a known state and kind of analyze um, the the blockchain at a point in time is super useful for getting that kind of great visibility you need to like debug difficult problems. So I think this is amazing. Yeah, work. totally. Yeah, this is going to be a great uh, boost for developer experience. And if you're a new developer, I'm going to give uh, another shout out for Soul Andy. Creates a lot of really great videos on how to do all sorts of different things on Solana. And you know, if you're if you're trying to learn Solana development, check out his videos, check out his content. He's he's really awesome. Very personable. Like I, I love Andy so much. He's such a character, and and I mean that in all the best ways, Andy, because I know you're watching. But Uh, Kind of a PSA, if anyone else is out there and you're creating developer content, whether it's written guides and tutorials or videos, then tag the Solana Devs Twitter account and tag myself, Nick Frosty, and even tag Mike. Tag us all and we can try to help share it out and get some extra discoverability on anyone that's creating content on uh, on Solana. It's going to be great. Let's, let's Let's all create more content. Yeah, hundred percent. So uh, I think like Solandi and uh, I think the cookbook were probably the the two biggest resources I had. 
um, I guess probably a year and a half ago now when I was first kind of getting into Solana development. So yeah. Yeah, same. And then the last thing I want to touch on is Stack Exchange. Got our obligatory plug for Stack Exchange. And just like we did last week, we're going to start shouting out all the people that are having the most amount of interactions and and the highest rank on Stack Exchange each week. So for this week, we've got Emils is ranked number two. And good job to Emils on all of the answers and questions that he's been participating in. And shout out to everyone else on here. Got Sol Andy, of course. And uh, don't forget... Check out Stack Exchange. If you have any questions on how to do anything Solana development, check out the docs and check out the Stack Exchange. But that's going to wrap it up for this week's change log. And I hope everyone has a great one. See you guys.